welcome to the senior people here, the strategy decision makers, and those who are currently working their way through uh, to determine exactly what is strategy. If I can um, think about an idea that's relevant enough and I communicate it well enough, a few milliseconds of electricity in my brain communicated to you can change how you think, can change how you uh, influence others' thoughts, and can change the behavior uh, and even the economic trajectory of a corporation. And there is fire behind the science. There is, uh, there is, there is passion and humanity behind this apparently hyper-rational topic. Alibaba um, has replaced the marketing department with a series of self-tuning algorithms. It's a Bayesian multi-armed bandit algorithm. What does it do? It says, what did you buy? What will you want to buy next? What information should I communicate to you to unlock that intention? What do you not even know that you probably want to buy next? I should actually shape your behavior um, and, and tell you what you need to buy next and to measure my effectiveness in so doing and to improve the machine of making these recommendations and to do all of that in a way that you find um, uh, uh, pleasant and compelling and to do that for every customer every second. So why the hell do you need a marketing department if you can do that with an algorithm? This relatively young discipline, a lot of its central tenets are not actually based upon deep, rigorous data analysis. They're based upon intuition. It turns out serendipity is real. Uh, in innovation processes often uncover things that you were not looking for in a delayed sense. It's real. It's not random. It's, it's, it has a predictable mathematical structure. And it can be harnessed, and it probably changes how we should be thinking about innovation. What we found was that uh, a stunning rise in um, corporate mortality. One in three chance of the average public company will not be around <coughs> in five years' time. So you ask a general how to win a war, the first question he'll ask you is, what sort of war do you mean? An information war, a guerrilla war, an asymmetric war, trench warfare? And then I'll tell you how to think about the problem of winning. The meta strategy is, how should I approach this problem? How should I think about what determines competitive advantage in the situation? One question is, can I plan it? Because if you could plan, why would you not plan? And if you couldn't, why would you try? It's a very important practical distinction. Malleability, can I shape it? If you could shape your own fate, why would you choose to be a victim of fate? But if you couldn't, why would you entertain the delusion that you could? The data just told us that we needed another dimension, which was harshness. Is the emphasis on survival, or is the emphasis on long-term advantage? Because there's a lot of companies right now that are up against questions of survival and short-term viability. Entrepreneurs don't analyze the market because there is no market. They create the market. Um, they don't look for competitive advantage because there are no competitors in the space that they are creating. When the evidence tells you that the world needs this, like you're testing, uh, it's te something is technically possible, somebody would buy it, <coughs> it's patentable, and you ask the incumbents, what do you think? And they say, you're mad, it's illegal, don't do it, it's a waste of money. You say, great, maybe I've got three years before these guys wake up. One of the biggest changes in business over the past decade has been an increase in the diversity of business environments. Ranging from stable to highly unpredictable, fixed to highly malleable, favorable to harsh. To succeed, leaders need to match their approach to strategy with their business environment. To facilitate this, BCG created the Strategy Palette. Let's explore how it works with a simple example. Your lemonade business is in a stable and predictable environment. Use the classical approach. Analyze, plan, execute. Joggers are your best customers, so position your stand along the trail and become the biggest lemonade business in town. Uh-oh, freak storms. You can't predict the weather, so forget planning. Try the adaptive approach. As the storm clouds move, so does the best spot for your stand. Experiment to track your customers and become the most agile player in your uncertain market. People are bored of lemonade stands on quiet streets. You need to revive your business with a visionary approach. Remember the bus stop by the park? It's dingy, but has the most potential customers. Give it a sweep, fresh paint, decorations. Be persistent. Nice lights. Now, people will line up for your pioneering project. Uh-oh, J 
jealous grown-up competitors say kids shouldn't put so much energy into lemonade. Regulation may be in the works. You need to shape your environment, orchestrating events to your eventual advantage. Tell customers about the crackdown to gain support, and promote your new Street Vendor Finder app. In return, your new vendor network will push your product. Red alert, the lemon crop has been ruined by caterpillars. Time for renewal. Cut back and save your allowance. Then pick a new growth strategy, say a visionary idea. Sell seasonal drinks like pumpkin spice lattes, hot cocoa, and green smoothies. To succeed, leaders must choose the right approach at the right time in each part of the business, selecting and refining the collage of approaches to stay tuned to changing environments. From theory to, to practice, um, it involves strategic simplification, it involves uh, thinking a lot about <laughs> communication, it involves understanding the biases, the mental biases of, uh, of, of who you're dealing with, it involves creating the case for change. There are basically four. One of them is the ability to adapt, the, the ability of disciplined experimentation. Most companies, most large companies, especially older ones, just intrinsically think about business as an exercise in forecasting and planning and scheduling. The idea of go off and experiment, see what happens, embrace diversity, embrace variance. It's culturally unfamiliar, the processes, the procedures don't exist, but it's a distinct set of capabilities. It's the people that have no choice but to go up against incumbent business models that change the world, not the large companies. Every company now needs to run the business and reinvent the business. And we call it ambidexterity. Ambidexterity, the ability to write with both hands is, uh, is, is uh, present in about 2% of the human population. Uh, by coincidence, it's about the same number for companies. Uh, resilience, this worrying about the longevity of the model and the robustness to, uh, to shocks and variants uh, in addition to the current performance of the model. Supposing we had um, a great diagnosis of the approach to strategy required, supposing we had the capabilities to execute, how would we lead? High performing companies that see the obsolescence of their business model or the potential obsolescence due to new technologies, new competitors, and are basically saying, how could we innovate? How do you create the confidence and the business case to step into the unknown, to take resources preemptively away from something that may be working or maybe in recent, in the recent past worked and put it on something which you cannot show an NPV for? This sort of syndrome, breaking through that, that's, that's, you know, that's the guts of ambidexterity, so it's change management too. I would like to understand how you would apply your framework to mining, which of course is a big industry sector in South Africa. The consequence of having a large fixed cost and variance in input and output costs is of course financially disastrous. Well, if we did it at a smaller scale but we place a value on flexibility, you know, what would that be? Can something that's an all or nothing thing actually be a, a set of staged investments? Can we actually... Uh, be specific about what technology needs to get done in order to create, um, to, to turn fixed costs um, into, uh, into, into, into variable costs. Supposing that, I, that the aim was to have everybody in this room completely aligned on exactly what we meant by an adaptive environment. Supposing that it turns out to be an adaptive strategy that's indicated, how do you kill an adaptive strategy? Fear of failure. If, if people perceive that you get fun punished for failing, you know, all all bets are off basically. Innovation, the second one, capability. So if that's fundamentally organizational success, how do you build the capability of people to innovate? It is about the execution, but it is about the thinking too. I think thinking clearly about a problem is absolutely as important as the execution. I've seen many cases of companies with um, you know, hyperactivity, unfo unfocused action, um, efficient action but the wrong actions. We have to have a common understanding. We have to have a sense of urgency. Ideally, we need um, experience and competence.